wonderful to just have you back with us on this broadcast and uh, where we do share uh, and look into encouraging one another to grow in the faith. Uh, and uh, we are, uh, this is a biblically based program where we look at uh, certain aspects uh, that help us to live out our Christian faith with hope with, you know, uh, and, and uh, with a renewed focus uh, going forward. Thank you uh, for those of you who have been interacting with us uh, via texts and, and phone calls. And, and thank you even so much for those who have been participating in helping this program to be uh, 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 made a reality. I'll just uh, go with you again to Second Kings and chapter 5 from where we have been reading, and uh, uh, we have so far been looking at a couple of things from there, and I will just read uh, a few verses from there so we can continue on today. Second Kings chapter 5, verse 1. Now Naaman, the captain of the host of the king of Syria, was a great man with his master, and honorable, because by him the Lord had given deliverance unto Syria. He was also a mighty man in valor, but he was a leper. And the Syrians had gone out by companies and had brought away captive out of the land of Israel a little maid, and she was assigned uh, to wait on Naaman's wife. And one day she said to her mistress, I wish by God um, my, my, my master would meet with the prophet that is in Samaria, because I'm sure he would recover him or cure him of his leprosy. And somebody went in and made mention to Naaman, saying, "This is what the little maid that is uh, uh, from the land of from the land of Israel was saying." And the king then the king of Syria said to Naaman, "Go, and I will send a letter to the king of Israel." And Naaman departed and took with him ten talents of silver and six thousand pieces of gold, and ch ten changes of clothing. And he brought the letter to the king of Israel, saying, When this letter has come to you, behold, I have sent uh, with this letter Naaman, my servant, to you, so that you may cure him of his leprosy. And it came to pass, when the king of Israel had read the letter, that he tore his clothes and said, Am I God? having the ability to kill and, uh, and to bring alive again, that this man sends to me his servant that I may cure him of leprosy? Wherefore, consider this matter, I pray you, and see how this man seeks an excuse to go to war with me. And it was so when Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his garments, he said to the king, why have you torn your clothes? Let the man come to me, and he shall know that there is a prophet in Israel. So Naaman went with his horses and with his chariots and stood at the door of the house of Elisha. And Elisha sent, and Elisha, um, and Elisha sent a messenger to him, saying, Go and wash in the Jordan seven times and your flesh shall return to you, and you shall be clean. But Naaman was angry, and he went away, and he said, Behold, I thought he would surely come to me, and put his hand over the place where I've got the leprosy, and cure me. Are not Abana and, and, and Papha, rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel? May I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned away and went away in anger. And his servants came and pleaded with him and said, Master, if the prophet had asked you to do something, some great thing, would you not have done it? How much more, rather, when he has asked you to do such a simple thing as to go and dip yourself in the water and be clean? Then he went down following their advice, and he dipped himself seven times in the Jordan, according to the word of the man of God. And immediately his flesh was healed and became like the flesh of, or the skin of a little child. And he was completely cured of his leprosy. 
That's the account from where we've been taking a couple of the things that we've been looking at and the things that we have been studying together. I want you to capture something here because we are talking on the subject, uh, you know, um, coming into your breakthrough moment coming into your breakthrough moment. It doesn't matter what the circumstances are that life has thrown at you. Somewhere along the journey of life, there is always an opportunity for you to come into your breakthrough moment. We've been looking at a certain, uh, um, uh, certain things, uh, 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 principles out of this uh, text so we can learn how to be able to move on in faith even in the times, or in the times when things seem to be uh, contrary contrary and against us. And looking at the account of Naaman here, uh, we begin, of course, by looking at what the scripture describes about him. And uh, verse 1 especially is loaded uh, when it comes to uh, giving the impressive uh, CV of uh, Naaman. It uh, talks about Naaman being uh, the commander of the Syrian army. And it taught not just a commander, but it talks about him being one who is very highly favored with the, the king. So the king really likes Naaman. The king would go to great lengths to do anything for Naaman because the Bible tells us Naaman is a very successful military general. In fact, verse 1 sums it up by saying, whenever he goes out in battle, he has always returned victorious and bringing with him a lot of spoils of war, enriching Syria, making the king of Syria rich and, and en enlarging you know, uh, um, the territory that uh, he controls. Controls. So he was a, a distinguished, in fact, the Bible calls him a mighty warrior. He's a distinguished uh, general. He's a great military strategist. He's highly favored by the king. Uh, he has many accolades of war. If it was in our day, he would have his whole chest all down to his stomach decorated with the medals. That's the kind of a man he was, a distinguished man, a distinguished, you know, uh, uh, military strategist and a man of high reputation. Uh, but then the verse 1 adds just one little detail about him. It says, but he was a leper. You know, and you know, that, that, that's what really struck me so much um, uh, out of this portion is that uh, how, how life can sometimes uh, uh, give this picture. Here is a man whom everybody envies. Here is somebody whom everybody celebrates. Here is somebody whom everybody, you know, honors and everybody thinks he's a great guy. He's a great warrior. He's a great man. Everybody, you know, would like to be like him, you know, but yet they do not know that beneath uh, the well-decorated military armor, he carries an ugly secret underneath. He is a leper. He is a man that is wearing out while he is still alive. If you know anything about leprosy, it's a disease that eats at you while you are still alive. It is damaging, you know, your organs, you know, and, 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 and breaking you down while you are still alive. And this was a well-guarded secret that the military the soldiers didn't know because he had this armor that covers him and he puts on this helmet. He has this impressive and after he has fully dressed in his war uniform, you know, you admire the general that you see and everybody gives the salute and everybody, you know, uh, declares, you know, just what a great general he is. But nobody knows that underneath the general is nursing an ugly secret a painful secret, a demoralizing secret. He's, uh, he's nursing underneath him, you know, a secret that is slowly tearing him apart and it's slowly killing him. And life sometimes is like that. I've been saying to you that, you know, um, we can sometimes uh, uh, be, you know, uh, like that in real life. You may come from a nice house, but you have a bad marriage. You know, you can be smartly dressed, but to still carry a broken heart. That, you know, you, 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 can, you can have wealth. You are a very wealthy man, but you don't even have a peaceful sleep at night. You know, you can be envied by everybody else. 
But you yourself, you even wish you were dead. You have no desire to see another day. You know, I want you to understand, you know, when you, have, when you find yourself at an awkward side in life and you wonder how, how, you've, uh, how you can come through with the circumstances under which you now find yourself, there is one thing that we must understand and we must look at. How did this man come into his breakthrough moment? And we began looking at a couple of things last week. And I said, uh, the previous week rather, and we said that, uh, number one, we see that uh, Naaman had to come to a serious lesson to understand that sometimes the solutions to your breakthrough, um, you know, come from um, the least places. It was a little maid who held the key to his well-being. You know, here is a man who is used to standing with kings and princes and royalty. Here is a man who is to be surrounded by other generals and senior military men. He's a man of wealth. He's a man of influence. He's a man of honor. And yet the solution to his problem came to a maid, not even a big maid, a little maid who actually maybe would be polishing his wife's nails, you know, uh, and, 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 uh, and, uh, you know, uh, keeping his wife, you know, uh, trimmed up here and there. That it was from that little maid, just a word from that little maid that brought about uh, his uh, solution. I said in the week that we began, I, I'm not going back in detail here, but I said in that week, sometimes we are guilty of looking for solutions, you know, from certain impressive, you know, avenues where when God has placed a solution at a place you wouldn't look at twice and you need God's revelation to say the solution to what you are carrying is not where you expect it to come from, it is from right here, from the insignificant looking place, from the insignificant looking person, from the person you would otherwise ignore and never even imagine a solution could come from there. Number two, we saw last week, uh, number two, we said, be willing to receive advice and counsel. You know, uh, this man received advice and he received the counsel, so to say, uh, 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 from a, a little maid, a slave, who said, I wish this man would meet with the prophet that is in my country. Now we go today to number three, and that's what I'll be dealing with today, number three, before we wind up for today. And this is our point number three. Know that it's not everyone who carries your solution. It's not everybody who carries your solution. I want you to see the text, the passage that we just read. Naaman has a problem. It's a carefully guarded problem. Because, but yet it is a problem that is slowly diminishing the chances of his life. And, and, and when he hears this little maid describe, you know, uh, 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 what he needs to do in order for the problem to be dealt with, I want you to see the sequence of, circums of, situ of, of actions that take place. Naaman goes to the king. After, he hears from the little maid, and then he goes to the king. And then he says to the king, you know, it has been, in fact, remember that he, it's not even Naaman himself who heard what the little maid said. When the little maid was speaking to his wife, there were other servants in the house listening to the conversation. And then the Bible tells us there that someone, we are not even given the name, someone who had listened to what the little girl was saying, someone goes then to Naaman and says, boss, this is what the little girl has just been telling mama, you know, uh, there while she's attending to mama. This is what she said. And then Naaman goes with that issue to his king. He says, uh, your majesty, I never broke this news to you, but uh, I've been suffering from a rather very inconvenient and ugly problem. And it's a problem that is threatening my very life. And the king says, what's the problem? We have the surgeons here. They can attend to you. And Naaman says, it's not something that can be easily attended to in our parts. I've tried the best I could. I am a leper. I have leprosy. 
But you know, the maid that attends to my wife, these are the words that she spoke. Immediately the king heard that. He says, oh, is that so? He immediately starts writing a letter. He drafts a letter. He says, okay, Naaman, take this letter with you. Go and meet the king of Israel. I've written instructions there on what he should do. And so Naaman takes some changes of garments and clothing, and he makes his way to the king of Israel. Man, I mean, I, I just find this uh, almost quite, I mean, you can laugh it if it was not so tragic, because it's quite comical, because uh, the little girl was very clear. If only my boss would meet the prophet. The little girl hasn't, 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 hasn't mixed up her speech. No, she has been categorically clear. If my boss would meet the prophet that is in Samaria. She didn't say if my prophet would go to the king of Israel. If my prophet would go to his king, his royal majesty. You know, no, 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 no. She was very clear he needs to meet the prophet. But the king directs the problem to a fellow king whom he has subdued, uh, who pays a tribute to him. He says, here with now by my hand, I have sent Naaman my servant with this letter, and look at the language in the Bible. He says, as soon as you, you receive this letter from Naaman, I would like you to cure him of his leprosy. I, I would have loved to be there to watch and see the king of Israel in Samaria, you know, opening the letter because uh, this very Naaman has led the troops here and he has conquered us. He has led the troops here and he has fought successful battles and he has defeated us. And so when Naaman is arriving in town, the king of Israel thinks, what wrong have I done now? Why does he send this military commander to me? What does he want? So when he opens the letter and is carefully reading the letter, you can see the countenance on the face of the king of Israel changing. Changing from uh, uh, no more to to concern and to deep concern and almost to fear, you know, because by the time he has finished reading the letter, everybody just sees him tearing his clothes. And everybody says, your majesty, is everything okay? What message is in the letter? He says, you know, I want you to see this letter. He says, that man, this is a pretext for war. This is an excuse for war. How can he send his army commander and ask me to heal, to heal him? Am I a god? Do I have the power to kill? And do I have the power to resurrect again? Who told him that I have the power to heal, leper, to cure lepers? Since when did I acquire powers to cure leper, le lepers? And you know, he sends this letter to me. He says to his cabinet, what am I supposed to do with a letter like this? And, and, you know, he sends to me, you know, and he, 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 he throws tantrums. The man is beside himself. And out there, the prophet hears of the commotion that is going on in the palace. And he sends his servant who rides there quickly. And the servant says, hey, 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 hey. The, the prophet has said, it's all right. This is not your problem. Send this man to the prophet. And the king says, oh, Really? He says, so he says to Naaman, yeah, please just follow after him. Just go with him. You know, he will show you uh, where the, 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 the issue can be addressed. You know, thank you very much. And he's almost relieved. And the troop leads, uh, you know, Naaman to, a, to, to, the, to the house of the prophet. I love this. And when he comes to the house of the prophet, the prophet doesn't even come to the door to meet the great highly favored and the honorable, you know, commander of the Syrian army. The prophet just sends the same servant. He says, go tell that man he should proceed down to the Jordan and dip himself in the water seven times. That's what he said. You know, and it was from there where Naaman's solution, where his breakthrough moment was to come. You know, are we not guilty sometimes that we sometimes think that it's, it's everybody who can have the solution, you know, to our problem? It's not everybody. Sometimes we are guilty when we are in a situation, when we are in certain circumstances, we even have a list we can draw up. I must see so and so, and see so and so, and text so 
and so and call so and so and maybe tomorrow I should even make a short trip and go and meet with so and so. You know, we have a whole list that we draw up where we think the possible solutions to our circumstances, our negative circumstances would come from, but we have never really heard from God as to where God has placed the solution to our problem. It's not everybody. And we're often guilty of seeking solutions from everybody. We knock on this door and knock on that door and knock on the other door and send a note to this one and make a call to that one and travel to go and see this one. No wonder we return back feeling 10 times more depressed, 10 times more worse, 10 times more bad than we were at the beginning because we have often been seeking solutions here and there and we have not understood where is the divine connection where God would have us seek the solution? When the king of Israel read the letter, he nearly suffered a stroke. He had a political authority, but he did not have divine authority, you know, authority in the spiritual dimension to deal with the problem that this man had. So he's at loss as to how to handle the situation. That's why he declares, am I God? Am I God? Because when you go to the people that are not the people God has appointed to handle your situation, you are only creating a further problem. You know, we lose the focus when we seek personalities instead of seeking God himself. That's the problem that has come today to many a Christian. They are even prepared to travel kilometers to meet people. They are prepared to go to very many places to meet people. They think their, their situation will be, will, be, will be handled by that one or by this one. Or if they went to see that one or if they just went to this one. How many times have you sat back and said, hey, Lord... I love the woman Hannah in the Bible. When she had a problem and it was really beyond anybody else, she just came to God. She would, she would go into the temple and spend a full day and bringing the matter before God. You know, bring, pouring her anguish before God and saying, but why? You know, I can't bring this matter to anybody else. I can only come to you. I want you to understand, somewhere near you, God has already got the answer to your situation. Somewhere near you, God has placed the solution. And don't go around running around like a chicken without a head, trying to seek help from each and everyone. And you come back and you feel more disappointed and you feel more awkward because you have not understood to seek the mind of God and say, what shall I do under these circumstances? And this is what we learn from here, you know, uh, uh, that uh, the king, the, 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 I mean, the, the commander was sent, first of all, to the king of Israel instead of being sent to the prophet. I wish the king, you know, of Syria had just said, uh, hey, king of Israel, I'm sending my servant to you, please. He has to meet the prophet that is in Samaria. Can you facilitate, you know, him meeting the prophet? Because the answer was not with the king of Israel. That's why he, 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 he almost breaks down himself when he receives it. Am I God? Do I have the power to cure leprosy? Since when did I have powers to cure leprosy? How come they bring this case to me? You know, what am I to do? This is an excuse for war, you know, and so on. Until the prophet says, hey, 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 hey. shh. The issue does not belong to you. The issue belongs to God. And it is God himself that will answer this issue. Now, may I give you a little secret? It's not even a secret. It's an open secret in any case. Oftentimes, God will allow certain situations to prevail in your life, not because he doesn't love you, not because he wants to destroy you, not because God wants to shut you out from his blessing, none of the things above. But God will sometimes allow certain situations to prevail in your life because he wants you to come closer to him. He wants you to come to the understanding that he is the one who holds the key to the circumstances 
circumstances that you are faced with. He is the one who opens the doors that nobody else could open for you. He is the one that is able to lift up even that which seemed to have sunk into total oblivion. He is able to bring it up and give it life again. It is God who is able to do things beyond what we can think humanly, think possible. And I want you to understand, in the moment when you are faced with these issues, do not go running around everywhere else. Come to God. Come to those whom God has raised around you. So they help you to connect, to reconnect back with the one that actually holds the answer to your situation. So it was the prophet that says it to the king, hey, do not, do not knock yourself down before you finish your wardrobe by tearing all the clothes that you have. Can you send that man to me? Bring, let the man come to me. That, and, and, and I love what the prophet adds. That he may know that there is a, a God in Israel. In other words, let the man come to me. He will meet with the one that is able to sort out his problem. He will meet with the one that is able to deal with the issues that nobody else can deal with. He will, be able, he will meet the one who is able to heal him and give him a skin as new as that of a little baby. And so we learn this third lesson from that passage, and that is, your solution just doesn't come, doesn't come from just everybody. That's what we must understand. Know that it's not everyone who carries your solution. There is a specific connection and a, a specific place where you're going to get the breakthrough to your situation. I pray that God may be able to lift you up I don't, know, I don't know what the issue is, what the circumstances are, what the weight is that sits on your shoulder. Other people envy you. Other people think you've really made it. Other people celebrate you. But deep down in your heart, only you know the weight of the issues that are pressing you down and almost causing you to despair of life itself. But I challenge you today and say, hey, you know, bring the matter before God himself. You know, we used to sing this hymn in times past. Ah, uh, we weak and heavy laden, cumbered with the Lord of care. You know, we must understand this one thing, and this one thing only because the hymn writer taught us to say, take it to the Lord in prayer. Because uh, he is the one that is more than able. He makes a way where there seems to be no way. He brings waters and rivers in the desert. He is the one that can be able to sustain even in the wilderness. And is able to cause to come alive even that which had disintegrated. Bring the matter before God in prayer. I pray God that you know you must begin to come before God with that issue in prayer. And saying, Father, I uh, forgive me. I have gone around every everywhere else. But one thing I never did, I never came to you. I have tried to meet everybody else. But one thing that I never did is uh, I never tried to meet with you. I have knocked on every door, but I have not knocked on the heavenly door. I, I, I have called for help from everybody else, but I'm guilty. I never called for help from you because uh, ultimately your help comes from the Lord. The psalmist says, I will lift my eyes unto the hills. From where does my help come? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of the ends of the earth. And that's why he never was short of God's help. I pray, God, that in due course, that weight may be lifted off your shoulder and that, uh, that, 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 uh, that, uh, that pressure may be off you and that you may be able to enjoy your life in the way God called you to enjoy that life. Father, I commend each and every one of the others that are listening to me on the other side of this broadcast. I pray that your grace grace will, will be sufficient for them, that you will sustain them with your victorious right hand, that the hand of the Lord will be upon them to lift up the hand of the Lord will be upon them, oh God, uh, uh, to break, Lord, uh, 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 every weight of oppression that was sitting over them and to bring them into their breakthrough moment when they can turn around and say, I moved around carrying this thing. I didn't know God was always waiting to lift it off my shoulder. May your grace suffice for them. May the Lord right now stretch his hand towards you and the Lord actually lift you out of that quagmire and the Lord may show himself strong on your behalf and the Lord
Lord may cause, may bring you into a rest out of the weariness that you've been passing through, carrying and dragging that burden with you all this time. So be it and so let it be established in the precious and worthy and holy name of our Lord and Savior, even Christ Jesus. Amen. Beloved, thank you so much. I'm looking forward to dealing with point number four when I'm with you again in this coming week. Between now and then, the Lord keep you in perfect peace. I would like to hear from you. The numbers are on the screen. I would like to receive your text. And if you are watching us via uh, YouTube or, or, or Facebook, please... Uh, um, uh, Give us a thumbs up or just give us a comment. We would love to hear from you. And um, we also want to say thank you for those of you who are stirred to help to support the uh, broadcast uh, uh, of this uh, program. Uh, also on KNC television and uh, uh, um, on Top Star Bouquet. Look out and uh, for this program and uh, tell your friends and colleagues about it. Maybe they too can be helped as we do this Bible study together and week by week study out of God's word. Between now and then, the Lord keep you in perfect peace. Looking forward to seeing you next week. God bless you. Shalom.